All right, I need y'all help with something. So this movie was suggested by a friend of the channel and a good friend of mine, Amid. You guys will probably meet him later on. But he suggested that I do a review on this movie. But I told him it's not much I can actually say about it. And I told him that it's, it's one, it is one particular scene that pretty much sums up the movie pretty well. Issa Rae's character and Jeffrey Wright's character, they sit down and have a discussion. If you never saw the movie and you want to be filled in, basically it's a movie about an author, a black author that wants to, he wants to see himself as just an author. He wants to remove the black because he doesn't want to be, I guess, stuck in this stereotype. Yeah. Wait a minute, why, why are these books here? This author, Ellison, is black. That's me, Ellison. Yeah. These books have nothing to do with African-American studies. They're just literature. The, the blackest thing about this one is the ink. So Issa Rae's character, she's also an author. And at first, she's not in the movie much. But it is this one particular scene I want to show you guys. If you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want it to, want it to be spoiled, go ahead and click away now because we're going to dive in, into this right now, man. So this is the scene that... Jeffrey Wright's character meets Issa Rae's character. Not meets, but kind of, it's kind of her, her, her introduction to the movie. Raves everywhere. Raves. The London Review of Books said, Wee's Lives in the Ghetto is a heartbreaking and visceral debut. Yeah, I was the first reader, meaning I would read all the manuscripts in the slush pile. Most every submission was from some white dude from New York. And so I think, where are our stories? You know, where's our representation? And it was from that lack that my book was born. Would you give us the pleasure of reading an excerpt? Yo, Sharonda, where you be going in a hurry like that? Donna asked me when she seed me coming out the house. It's the, the freaking slave language for me, man. And if I is, Ray Ray is going to be a real father this time around. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, a, and the freaking white woman standing up first to apply. All right. So what I need help with and, and what I'm trying to dig deeper in is the scene when these two author, authors meet. So you have one author that's purposely trying to just be universal and just be a straight author and not be labeled as a African-American author. Then you have this other author with Issa Rae's character that seems like she's over-exaggerating her blackness just to sell books. So he made a book to kind of mock her book. He wrote this book under a different alias, just thinking that it was going to be a joke and it wasn't going to go anywhere, but actually end up being highly successful. It almost matched the success of, of Issa Rae's character's book. So, it brings us to the meat of this video. So she, she's, she's, she's picked as a judge in this, this literature awards or whatever, and he's also picked as a judge. Without the people that's over this organization knowing that he's actually the writer of one of the books that was selected. His, his his book, the mock version of her book. Do you mind if I, if I ask you something? Sure. Um, what about fuck did you find pandering? For those that's, that haven't watched the film and still watching this video, first, why did you want to be spoiled? Second, the elf word is actually the name of his book, the book that he wrote to mock her. Just felt soulless is the word that I'm going to use. <laughs> you said you agreed, right? Yeah, I, I do. I think it seems written to satisfy the tastes of guilt-ridden white people. How is fuck so very different from your book? You think my book's trash? No, to be honest, I, I haven't read your book. I've read excerpts, and it didn't seem so dissimilar. I did a lot of research for my book. Like, she didn't ask, ask the question. He asked, like, is the two books similar or not? And she kind of, I don't know. She didn't, re she, she didn't really ask the question. That's the kind of, I guess, what, what kind of has me puzzled a little bit. 
I, I, don't, I don't need to write about my life. I write about what interests people. You write what interests white publishers fiending black trauma porn. They're the one buying the manuscripts. The, is it bad to cater to their tastes? If you're okay feeding people's base desires for profit. I'm okay with giving the market what it wants. That's how drug dealers excuse themselves. And I think drugs should be legal. See, I, this is what I'm struggling with. So how, so how I relate to this film, man. So here on YouTube, I purposely talk about certain films with, with people of, of color. Not because I, I know that's what people want to watch from me, but that's just because that's that's what I gravitate towards. So between these two characters, it's hard to kind of pit sides. Issa Rae's character, she's saying, well, this is what the market wants, and I'm basically just making a living. So what's the, what's the issue? He's saying, well, you're kind of a sellout. You're not, you're not fed up with it. The black people in poverty, uh, Black people rapping, black people as slaves, black people murdered by the police, whole soaring narratives about okay. black folks in dire circumstances who still manage to maintain their dignity before they die. I mean, I'm not saying these things aren't real, but we're also more than this. See, I, after, after he said that, I'm sided more with him, because we talked about this on this channel before, but Will Smith did the, uh, was it Emancipation? The whole slave movie, I was saying, we, we got enough slave movies, y'all. Let's talk about something positive in African-American history. But So I'm more on his side, but let's see what she has to say. People, White people read your book and confine us to it. They think that we're all like that. Then it sounds like your issue is with white people, Monk, not me. Well, maybe, but I also think that I see the unrealized potential of black people in this country. Potential is what people see when they think what's in front of them isn't good enough. Maybe, maybe they purposely did it this way so you're kind of seesawing between whose side you're on. Because you start off on his side and then kind of get on her side, then his side again, and it comes back to her with the statement of your problem is with white people, not us, not, not African-American people. I don't know, man. That's a tough one, man, because her saying... You're basically seeing me as not good enough just because I I basically turn lemons into lemonade. What's a what's a good example, like a real life example that we can relate to this, y'all? Like the first thing that comes to my head is the TV series Power. It's all about drugs and gang violence and stuff like that. But in in its core, it's actually a pretty good series. So maybe Issa Rae's character is more like a 50 cent. People may see him as, oh, you're kind of, you kind of making black trauma porn or whatever he called it. But even if someone said that, we can't discredit his work because, like I said, in his core, it's actually a very entertaining and and probably one of my top five series of all time. Like the original, the original Power, y'all, the original Power, and I'm pretty sure it's a lot of white people that praises that series as well. But it's. I mean, I don't know, but that's why I was saying I need I need help with this because it's it's hard to wrap my mind around it. Maybe I need to rewatch the whole film a second time to better understand it. I never actually just process my thoughts on camera, so I just wanted to try that out with y'all, man, and actually have y'all involved in my thought process. Besides, because this is the, what I just did in front of y'all. This is what I normally do on my own and then I'll come and do a review but yeah man that's all I gotta say